So I'm a soil scientist and agronomist from CIRAD. Uh, I've been working in Zimbabwe for seven years now. Um, I mainly work in agroecological -eco region two and three, so I don't have much experience in this kind of very arch uh, ecosystems. But I'm very happy to, to be here to, to give some insights about what is soil health and why it should be fully considered in the one health approach. So I'm sorry, I will start with a, a definition. What is a soil? So soil is defined as a biological active porous medium that has developed in the uppermost layer of the Earth's crust. So it's basically made of five main ingredients. So you have the minerals, sand, silt, silt clay. You have soil organic matter, living organisms, gas, and water. So as you can see, is here is the average composition of uh, soil at the global scale from FAO. We can see the weight composition. Most, most of the mass of a soil, of course, is made of the minerals. Then you have some water. And you can see that the organic matter is a very small ma uh, percentage of the mass of a soil. Here, 3%. But actually, in uh, many soils in sub-Saharan Africa, is much lower than that, less than 1%. 3% is already a, a, a quite good soil. OK, so how uh, does a, f a soil is, is formed? So soil formation is called pedogenesis. So everything starts from a, a parent material, a rock. And then with interaction with climate and biological activity, uh, you have some physical and chemical weathering. And with time, you have uh, the development of different soil horizons. But it's a very, very slow process. So I want you to real realize how slow this is. It takes about 100 to 1,000 years just to form one centimeter of soil. So uh, you, you now understand that soil is a non-renewable resource uh, at human, human scale. Um, and the problem is that currently we are losing soil at a much faster rate than, than it is formed in many regions of the world uh, through erosion or through a bad uh, land management practices. I just want also to mention this citation from a very famous uh, soil scientist. I think it's a very good summary of what is a soil and what are the importance of, of soil. So essentially all life depends upon the soil there can be no life without soil and no, si no soil without life. They have evolved all together. So now when we are talking about soils, actually we are talking about a huge diversity of soils. Uh, FAO has defined 30 major uh, soil types, but actually there are many, many more, many sub subgroups, but these are the major ones. So you can see different colors, different horizons, and of course all these soils have very different properties, uh, very different um, characteristics. Some are suitable for agriculture, for agriculture, sorry, and others are not at all. So now at the global scale, here is a diversity of soils. So you can immediately see that, for example, in sub-Saharan Africa, you don't have the same soil that we have in Europe. And this is because of uh, initial rock uh, parent material that was different and the interaction with climate that has led to very different soils in different contexts. Here, just a brief focus on Zimbabwe. We could think like looking at, at the landscapes, it's all the same kind of soils, but actually it's not at all. There are many, many different soil types, even in Zimbabwe, uh, as you can see here uh, on, on this map. So it's important to keep in mind this diversity, because when we are talking about soil health, we are not talking about a unique soil health. Uh, it's always context specific and soil health is also defined according to the type of soil that, that you are um, dealing with. Okay, so now if we, if we look at a larger scale, so this is the volume occupied by the earth. If we were able to squeeze all the atmosphere in a ball, this is the volume that uh, will occupy the atmosphere. Same for the water, all the water of the world, oceans, lakes, etc. they could be put in this bowl. But now if you look at soils, this is the volume that occupies all the soils of the world. So you can see it's very, very small. And actually, uh, this small volume is then spread on all the continents, on all the land, land. 
So it makes a very, very thin layer from one to a few centimeters to a few meters depending on the context. So it's a very thin layer, almost like a, like a skin, very fragile. But despite of that, it's actually the support of so many ecosystem services. Uh, these are the seven main soil functions uh, that, that are usually mentioned. So of course, soils are involved into biomass production, forestry, agriculture. A huge role into storing, filtering, and transforming nutrients, water. It's a huge biodiversity pool. It's also the physical and cultural uh, environment for human activities. It's a source of raw material, and it's a huge carbon pool, as you will see uh, later. And it's also an archive for geological and archaeological heritage. So now if we look at uh, this figure here on the right, you have the soil science in the middle. Then the, out the, the following cycle are the seven soil functions that I, I've just described. The following cycle is uh, ecosystem services that are um, emerging from these soil functions. And the outside cycles are the SDGs, so the su Sustainable Development Goals. And you can see the ones with the red dots are all the SDGs where soils are involved. So actually, soils they are involved directly into 13 out of 17 uh, SDGs. So what does that mean? That means basically it's impossible to achieve these SDGs if you don't uh, manage your soil in a sustainable way. Just a quick look on the importance of soil for climate change and on the global carbon cycle. You can see that the carbon in all the soils, it's huge. It's actually three times more carbon in the soils than in all the atmosphere and much more than, than in all the vegetation, all, all the forest, etc. So I will not focus more on the fluxes and on the 4 per thousand initiative. We can come back after if you have questions, but there was this initiative launched at the COP21 in Paris about um, soils for food security and climate, and it is directly linked to, to this importance of soil for climate change mitigation, uh, adaptation, and food security. So now, I'm not sure how many of you know that soil is actually the most biodiverse singular habitat on Earth. These are the few pictures of uh, animals, microfauna that you can find in the soils. And soil is likely home to about 60% of all the species that we have on Earth. So it's absolutely uh, huge. And of course, it really, de really depends on the soil groups, uh, on the uh, fauna groups, sorry. So like, for example, the fungi, most of the fungi are found in the soil. Uh, plantae also growing on the soil, but you can see also for bacteria directly related to health, half of the bacteria uh, are found in the soil. And viruses, uh, significant amount also of viruses are found in the soil. So now just to continue on this, bi this biodiversity aspect, if you take just uh, one handful of uh, grassland soil, this is what you get. 50 kilometers of mycelium, so 50 kilometers of fungi. Um, 100 billion bacteria from 10,000 species. 500 meters of plant roots. Then you have also protozoa, 100,000 of species, nematodes, algae, etc. So it's absolutely a huge biodiversity. So of course, all this soil biodiversity, this soil microbiome is very much related to the one else uh, concept because soils is actually um, a source, but also a reservoir for pathogens, but also for uh, beneficial mi microorganisms. Uh, so as you can see on the picture on the right, you have all this pool of microbes in the soil, and then part of these microorganisms are found in our gut, humans, animals through the feed and food, and also in the roots uh, of plants. Plants are able to actually recruit their own microorganisms through exudation of um, molecules in the soil. So all these uh, microbes found in the soil, they are directly related, of course, to plant pathogens, plant growth promotion, also antibiotic uh, resistance, bacteria, soil-borne soil pathogens, etc. So yes, soil health is defined as a continued capacity of soil to function as a vit vital living ecosystem that sustains plants, animals, and humans. 
So it has actually emerged from a previous concept that was called the soil quality concept. But this concept was much more focused uh, on humans. As you can see, the soil health, health definition includes also plants and uh, animals. So it's a much more uh, inclusive uh, for planetary health. And actually, very recently, in the last year, there is another concept that has emerged. It's, it's called the soil security uh, concept. And in this concept, soil is seen as a common good similar to water and to air. And it's very much used in the policy context because it's, uh, it states also that soil, soil, well, access to soil ecosystem services should be on the same level as other human rights. Okay, so now how do we measure and monitor soil health? There are different types of indicators that can be classified into three main categories. So you have the physical, the chemical, and the biological indicators. You have a list here, sorry, it's very small on the right, of very commonly used indicators classified in these three categories. And these indicators are designed in a way that they are informative. So it means we should be able to interpret them. Uh, they should be sensitive. For example, you should be able to see the effect of uh, land management or land use change. They should be effective or practical, and they should be uh, relevant. And after all this multitude of soil health indicators, they are of often integrated into a single uh, index that we call the soil health index. And so, for example, the soil health index of a cropland is then compared to a reference soil health index so usually it's a natural ecosystem on a given on the same soil type, same climatic conditions uh, on the, um, the the region of interest. I mean, so just to mention that uh, there is no universal soil health index; it's always context specific. So here is a, here is a review done by colleagues recently. They analyze the different soil health as assessment schemes so far. And you can see that um, in these uh, schemes, most of the time they use chemical and physical indicators. So this is due to uh, historic focus on soil health indices for crops, crop production. Um, and you can see that so far there are very few assessments that include the biological indicators. So if you wanted to have a more comprehensive soil health index, of course we should have a more balanced set of indicators with at least 20% of, of each of these category. And sometimes you might need also uh, different types of, uh, of indices for different uh, ecosystem services that you want to assess. For example, if you want to assess the capacity of, of a soil to conserve biodiversity, of course you will have more biological indicators, but maybe for crops you will have more chemical indicators, for climate maybe physical and chemical, etc. So at CIRAD, actually, we have developed uh, a tool to assess soil health. It's called the Biofunk tool. Um, tool. <laughs> so using also these three types of indicators, chemical, physical, and uh, biological. And it has been designed in a way that it is a low-cost test, and it can be done in situ in the field. So basically, you have um, a list of different analyses that are directly performed into the field. And then you are able to rank your soil and compare it to uh, another uh, management, for example. And here is an example on your right. For example, on the, the right, you have the forest compared to the left, the cassava crop. You can see, of course, the forest has a much, much higher uh, index compared to the cassava cropland. So now I just want to mention that 95% of our food is produced on soils, of course but about one third of the world soils are already uh, very much degraded. So there are de different types of uh, degradation. So it can be biodiversity loss, salinization, nutrient imbalance, compaction, sealing, pollution, acidification, erosion, loss of organic carbon. So there are many, many types of, of degradation. But there are also some solutions. Um, so the first of all, of course, is to protect the I intact land. Uh, then we need to better manage the, the croplands and restore the native uh, cover. So for cropland management, it can be achieved, for example, through agroecology, which has been uh, defined by FAO by uh, 13 principles. Some of these principles 
are at the agroecosystem scale, like recycling, input reduction, etc. And some other principles are more at the food system uh, level. So now, w what can we do in croplands to, to improve soil health? Well, here is just a study we, we performed recently looking at soil organic carbon, which is a, a very common uh, indicator of soil health. And we look at different practices. And you can see that there is a, uh, quite a number of practices that have a very positive impact on soil carbon. So it can be biochar, intercropping, manure, rotations, mulch, agroforestry, cover crops, integrated soil fertility, ma soil fertility management, redu reduced tillage, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a lot of options that needs to be tailored to the local context. So now, as we are in Wangay, it's my last slide, um, we can wonder what is the impact of conservation areas on soil biodiversity and soil health. We know the impact, of course, on elephants, on lions, but what is the impact on soil health? So there is actually a, a huge ongoing project, which is called the Soil Biodiversity Observation Network, involving 80 countries globally, with a lot of countries in Africa as well. And then we are uh, comparing the same land use inside the conservation area and outside the conservation area. So for example, it can be a forest inside the conservation area and just outside the conservation area. And then we are taking soil samples, of course, and we analyze a lot of parameters and we hope to uh, have the conclusion that conservation areas are beneficial also for soil biodiversity and health. I don't have any results so far because it's ongoing, but uh, yeah, I hope we'll have good results. So a few take home messages. So I hope you are now convinced that soil health is a critical part of environmental health. Uh, in my sense, it should be fully considered in the one health approach as it is also critical to achieve the SDGs. Then there is no universal soil health index. It's always context specific regarding the climate, soil type, etc., and also depending on the ecosystem services that we want to, to consider. And there is still a lot of research ongoing on this to have better um, indexes. So also, I think there is a potential for win-win opportunities for different challenges that we have at the global scale, like climate change, mitigation, biodiversity loss, and world one else. I think all of this can be uh, linked just by protecting uh, our soils. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>